Hey all, Matt Hepworth here, and Universal Audio just announced something that I think catches a lot of people by surprise, and that is the ability to use any audio interface with Luna, not just your Apollo. In fact, you don't even have to use an Apollo in order to use Luna. And you can switch seamlessly back and forth between interfaces. It's really sweet. I'm going to use a Quantum 2 for this video and uh, show you a little bit about it. Let's check it out. Okay, so here I am on my Apple Silicon Mac, and I am just going to turn off my Apollo. Okay, so now you can see that Apollo is offline and no UA devices connected. So now I'm just going to launch Luna. And what I do have connected is my Personas Quantum. So I'm just going to make a new session. And the first thing you're going to notice, well, not the first thing you're going to notice, but one thing is down here at the bottom, it now says native. And so normally if an Apollo was connected, I could switch between Apollo as the playback engine and native. So this is completely new, really awesome. So I'm going to go into my settings and I can see that I have quantum selected and you can see all these other source types. Basically anything the audio can pass through, you can add into Luna. Now up here you can see the buffer size. There's default, small and large. Um, we'll come back to that. Okay, so here I am. I'm just going to add a couple of tracks. Just going to add a couple of mono. All right, I'm going to unlink these because they were linked to begin with. And now if I click here, I can see all of my quantum inputs. And this is super simply mapped. I mean, it's just a one for one with the driver, which is really convenient. Everything pre-populated. I have nothing that I have to customize here, which is really cool. So I'm going to set my track one to input one, which it already is. I'm going to change my track two to input two, just because. There we go. So now I'm going to record enable track one. I have a microphone connected. Check, check. There it is. Works really well. There's a little bit of latency, but as you can see, I'm in the default latency settings right now. So if I change that to small, I now have less latency. Check, check. A lot less latency. That feels a lot better. And now I can put a plug in on here. Just going to go UADX, put the good old Rev A on there, pull down my output, crank my input so we can see some meter. Check, check. Check, check. Adds a tiny bit more latency. Check, check. But working perfectly. This is a totally workable situation already. And uh, obviously we're not touching the CPU or anything because there are basically no tracks on here. So the simplicity is so good with the mapping and everything like that. Super, super smooth. So if I go back over to my inputs, I mean, I can map any input I want wherever it's all populated and everything. Now you might've noticed that there was the buffer setting in the settings menu as well. So there are actually two places we can change this. So if I default it here, it'll default it back in the main menu and so forth. Change back to small. And this is totally ready to record or do whatever I want to do. Awesome. So this is recording with the new native engine. I'm getting very low latency. Everything sounds great and it's working really well. It's working as well as any normal DAW would. Super simple. So this is recording with the new native engine. I'm getting very low latency. Everything sounds great and it's working really well. It's working as well as any normal DAW would. And you can see that compressor is acting on the playback as well, just like it should. So super slick. This works great. We can punch in, we can punch out whenever we want to. Blah, 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 punching in, punching out. 
Easy, easy, easy. Native uh, punching in. You can see. So super simple. And this was a really big surprise when uh, Universal Audio announced it. Now I'm going to connect my Apollo and show you some other cool things we can do. Connecting. Okay. Now I have my Apollo connected. And check this out. I can seamlessly switch to Apollo right now. And this is now my Apollo as my input. And this is the DSP versions of everything. So if I come in here, I now see my Apollo inputs. So mic three, I actually do have mapped on my Apollo, which is why we're getting a signal. Check, check. Turn that up a little bit. Check, 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 check. And that's using my actual Apollo input through console. But here's what's even more crazy. I can now go into settings, change it to native engine, and I can enable Apollo. And I am now aggregating these two devices super simply. So I hit apply. It's telling me that some of my routes changed and that's good to know. But I come over here. If I go to my inputs, I now have Apollo with all my Apollo inputs. And then below that, I have my quantum two with all my quantum inputs and I can freely mix and match between any of these. Check, check. So we are running Apollo natively alongside Quantum natively, and they are gonna work interchangeably. If I set this one to be my Apollo input three, where my mic is, and record enable that, check, check. I now have both working seamlessly together. Really cool. And you can collapse these, so if you only want to see Apollo, it's easy enough. If you only want to see Quantum, that's easy enough. Really easy to navigate if you have multiple devices, which is really cool. Now I'm gonna to switch to Apollo only, but I'm gonna stay in native mode. So I'm just gonna to untoggle my Quantum and apply that. It tells me that my session info changed, which is correct. And one of the uh, very typical complaints on uh, Luna in the past is you can't use native amp sims and things like that with low enough latency to make things work. So let's test that. I'm going to set this to input one on my Apollo, which is high Z, and I'm going to enable a uh, amp sim here. I'm just going to get my guitar really quick. Okay, so I just connected my guitar. And I'm going to put an amp sim on there. Plug in Alliance. I'll just use the Angle Savage. But this is the native version. This is Plug in Alliance. This is not the UAD version. You can see that it's Plug in Alliance right here. <laughs> So working great. I'm just going to try it in default. Uh, default, kind of rough. Um, I mean, could make it happen in a pinch, but it's it's kind of rough. Small would be my preferred. So just record a little bit of that. And there it is, recorded the DI, so I can change that to whatever I want after the fact, use other IRs or anything like that. Solo that guy. Piece of cake. Sounds great, works great. So I'm going to switch back to the quantum now.
Oh, by the way, if you don't check anything by default, it'll select your system settings and just match that automatically, which is really convenient. Okay, so I'm going to remove the plugins and I'm going to test the latency with my testing equipment and see what we get. I'm going to come back and give the results here. Okay, so after measuring everything, it looks like small is a buffer of 128, default is a buffer of 512, and large is the expected buffer of 1024. With an interface like Quantum, which is the fastest native interface on the market, that gives us a round trip latency of 5.77 milliseconds at 48 kilohertz. Apollo comes in at about two and a half milliseconds higher, coming in at about 8.3 milliseconds. And that kind of latency is great for virtual instruments because we're only dealing with the output buffer. So it's about half that roughly but it's also gonna work very well for things like electric guitar because we're used to being five to seven feet from our amplifier at a minimum. And that's gonna be roughly the same realm as the latency that we're experiencing. On a related note, this comes up all the time where people say it's the equivalent of being five feet away from something. When you're talking about vocals, that has no validity whatsoever because our head is resonating. And so it's essentially zero latency is what we're expecting to hear. And so when we get higher latency, we hear comb filtering. But on guitar, that's a completely different beast. And by comparison, Luna running in Apollo mode through Apollo is giving us a round trip latency of only 2.7 milliseconds through its DSP. Unfortunately, the buffer size doubles at 96 kilohertz, so your latency is almost exactly the same at 96 kilohertz as it is at 48 kilohertz. And at 96 kilohertz, Luna set to Apollo mode, running through Apollo's DSP is only 1.1 milliseconds, so an incredibly low latency. For those of you into the nerd talk, the buffer that it shows inside your DAW is for your input, and then that same number is again for your output. So if your buffer is 128, you actually have 256 samples of added latency because of the buffer. So if we take the default buffer, which is 512, and add an additional 256 samples, which would be a safety buffer of 128 for the input and 128 for the output, you'll actually get these same numbers that I measured rather than the expected numbers based on the buffer alone, which would be 256 samples less. And 256 divided by 48, which is our sample rate, equals 5.33 milliseconds. And so if we subtract 5.33 milliseconds from this total, that's what we would have without that safety buffer. Meaning instead of 27 milliseconds at default, we'd have less than 22 milliseconds of latency. Now, when we're dealing with this high of latency, it's not really going to make that much difference. They're all too high for most practical uses. So in my opinion, you need to stick to small for any recording. Keep in mind, this is an open beta and Universal Audio is always listening to feedback. An interesting happy bug that had occurred in one of the betas is it was actually keeping the lower buffer size of 128 while using 96 kilohertz if you switched from 48 to 96 kilohertz. And so I was able to get three milliseconds round trip latency with Quantum and four milliseconds with Apollo at 96 kilohertz by exploiting that bug. And that really is a good latency, something that you can use for almost any task without too many troubles. If you guys would like to see a lower latency option at 96 kilohertz, or maybe even lower buffer sizes at all sample rates, Make sure to use this feedback option in Luna and send it to Universal Audio. So this gives us a lot of new possibilities for Luna that never existed before, like the ability to now output to Dolby Atmos bridging so you can mix in Atmos. And of course, it also gives you expanded I.O., which is a lifesaver if you just need a few more inputs while you're tracking and you have another interface kicking around. You can just connect it up, aggregate them automatically in Luna, and then you have enough inputs for everything you need.
Now, one thing to keep in mind is Luna is still exclusive to Apollo users. So if you don't own an Apollo, you can't get Luna. And uh, that's part of the reason that the iLock authorization is required for Luna, because this was probably always part of UA's plan. So anyway, pretty cool development. Thanks for watching. Matt Hepworth, see you next time.